Mr. Commissioner, Hall of Famers, invited guests, baseball fans. If it seems I'm a little nervous right now, I am. It's simply because I'm not used to starting things, if you know what I mean. As I look at this plaque with my likeness and this handlebar mustache, I know that a hundred years from now, there will be a 10-year-old boy go up to his dad and say, hey, dad, they messed up on this. Shouldn't this say 1892 instead of 1992? And I know it's going to happen. There are several people who have had a lot to do with me being here today. Unfortunately, there is one who cannot be here, my dad. He passed away about a year and a half ago. He was my coach. He taught me everything he knew about the game. He taught me how to pitch. He would have loved to have been here today, but somehow I know that he is. I'd like to tell you a story about him and I. When I was about eight years old, I went over to my neighbor's house, and there was no one home at the time. And I found a book of matches, and I started playing with these matches. Well, the next thing I knew, the bedroom was on fire. Yes. <laughs> well, as I sat there and watched the fire department putting out the fire, I realized what a terrible thing I had done. My dad was at work. And when he got home from work, my mother told him what I had done. And I was up in my bedroom, and I heard his steps coming up the, up the stairway to my room. Well, I knew I was going to get it. But instead, he kind of surprised me. He, he didn't spank me. He didn't yell at me. He said, come with me. So down the stairs we went, outside to my dad's old Dodge. And down towards town, we started driving. Well, he pulled up in front of the sheriff's station. And I didn't know what he was going to do there. And we went indoors into the sheriff's station. He knew the sheriff in town. They were real good friends. And the next thing I know, we were walking down the hall to one of the cells. I was eight years old now. So my dad, uh, he puts me in the cell. The, the sheriff opens it, he puts me in. And he leaves me there for three hours. Well, for those three hours, it seemed like three years. Now, you might think this is a cruel thing to do to an eight-year-old boy, but you'd have to really know my dad. He had his way of doing things, and he had his way of getting his point across. And on that day, he did three things. First of all, he scared the hell out of me. <laughs> Second, I never, ever played with matches again. And thirdly, I gained a whole lot of respect for him that day. because of the way he handled it. <clears throat> and it's kind of ironic that for 17 years in the big leagues, my job was putting out fires, not starting them. There are several people that I'd like to acknowledge today. One, of course, is the scout who signed me in 1964, on Christmas Eve, Art Lilly. Another gentleman, a sports writer from Chicago, who in 1969 created a new statistic. This statistic is now known today as the save. This statistic helped revolutionize relief pitching. It gave relief pitchers a gauge to show how, they're, how, how successful they were during a season. And every relief pitcher owes a whole lot of thanks to this gentleman. I'd like to thank the Warner Lambert Company and Roll Aids for their involvement in relief pitching. <laughs> Believe me, their creation of the Fireman of the Year Award, which is probably the most prestigious award a relief pitcher can win, it gave relief pitchers something to shoot for. I learned a lot from watching, and in 1970, I had the opportunity to sit in the bullpen with a guy who was on his way out of the game. He had some great years with Cleveland, uh, Minnesota, and I, he was our stopper in 1970 in the bullpen. I had a chance to sit and talk with him and watch him pitch, and I learned a lot from this man. And I'd like to thank him, Jid Mudcat Grant. Thank you, Jim. In the 17 years that I played, I had 15 managers. 
But uh, there are a couple that I'd like to acknowledge. First of all, <laughs> Hank Bauer, who in 1969 gave me my first shot at the big leagues. And secondly, a guy who, along with my first pitching coach, Bill Posdell, came to me one day and said, son, the only way you're ever going to see the ninth inning is going to be as a relief pitcher, because you're never going to see it as a starter. And he put me in the bullpen. And when he did that, he changed my whole career around, because I was almost on my way out of baseball. And he gave me confidence in myself to be able to do the job out there. And he did that by doing one thing, and that was handing me the baseball, day after day after day. And that was Dick Williams. Thank you, Dick. I'd like to thank the organizations that I played for, Bud Selig with the Milwaukee Brewers, the late Ray Kroc with the San Diego Padres, and Charlie Finley with the Oakland A's. I found throughout my career that if you surround yourself with great ball players, great things are going to happen. And there's no, no, this happened to me, I believe me, I had some great ball players around me. But I had the opportunity to play for probably one of the best baseball teams in the last 40 years, the Oakland A's in the early 70s. I lived and died with a double play ball. And I had probably one of the best double play combinations behind me in Burt Campanaris and Dick Green. I had a good solid third baseman in Sal Bando. I had two good glove men at first, Mike Hegan and Mike Epstein. And in the outfield, I had Reggie Jackson, Billy North, and probably one of the best defensive left fielders to play behind me, and Joe Rudy. In Milwaukee, I had an all-star infield. Cecil Cooper, Jim Gantner, Robin Yount, and Paul Molitor. In San Diego, I had the opportunity to watch a young rookie come up and play shortstop, second base, and third base all at the same time. And he's still doing it, Ozzie Smith. All of these players and many more is the reason why I'm standing here today. These are the guys who made the plays. I couldn't have done it without them. I'm proud to be here, and I'm proud of my accomplishments in the game of baseball. But I think I'm most proud of the position that I played, the relief pitcher, the short man, the stopper, the closer, the ace, the fireman. Whatever tag you want to throw on him, that's what I'm most proud of. There have been sports writers who have asked me how it feels to be the pioneer of relief pitching. Well, I'm far from being a pioneer. I'm not that old. And there have been a lot of great relief pitchers long before me, who've had some outstanding years coming out of the bullpen. Johnny Murphy, Jim Constanti, Joe Black, Elroy Face, Dick Raditz, Lenny McDaniel, Ron Paranowski, Hoyt Wilhelm, and who could ever forget what Larry Sherry did in the 1959 World Series when he was the most valuable player. These are the pitchers that opened the door for the relief pitchers of my era, the Bruce Suiters, Sparky Lyles, the Goose Gossages, Kent DeColvey, Dan Quisenberry, Tug McGraw, Daryl Knowles. You've heard, you've heard all of their names, and, and the, li the list is endless. Each and every one of these players had as much to do with the success and the recognition of relief pitching as I did. It's just that I happened to be at the right place, at the right time, and on the right ball club. I'd like to introduce my mom. She's here today. Mom, I'd like to thank you for all your support. All those trips to the ballpark. <laughs> I'd like to thank my lovely wife, Susie, who's been my best friend. My kids, Laurel, Jason, Amy, Tyler, Corey, Matthew, 
That's enough. <laughs> I'd like to thank all my family and friends, aunts and uncles who traveled from all over the country to be here today. From Toronto, Ohio, to Cucamonga, California, where I grew up as a young kid playing baseball. I'd also like to give a special thanks to a couple gentlemen here today who have gone out of their way to make this weekend go very smoothly for me and my family, John Boggs and Andy Strasberg. I'd also like to congratulate the other inductees, Tom Seaver, Hal Neuhauser, the late Al McGowan, for, all their, out, for their outstanding careers and their contributions to the game. It's an honor for me to be going into the Hall of Fame with these gentlemen. In closing, I'd like to say to every relief pitcher before me, every guy who ever had to sit in a bullpen, every guy who ever had to sit and wait for a phone call to ring, and every guy who ever had to walk into a pressure situation, you all own a piece of this. You're all winners, and this day confirms it. Thank you.